If you're watching this video, then I'm assuming you've either been to Seabreeze Beach House and you want to hear what others think about it, or you're considering going yourself. Well, we've just got back from nine nights, 10 days at Seabreeze Beach House in Barbados, and we're here to tell you all about it. I'm gonna break down every part of Seabreeze Beach House, I'm gonna rate it, and I'm gonna review it, and then we're gonna have one overall score. What did we think, though? Let's find out. In my previous life, I was an international training manager for a five-star hotel and spa brand. I used to travel the world, living out of five-star hotels such as Ritz-Carlton, One and Only, and Luxury Collection. I would write a report on the standards I found at these hotels and train the teams to ensure true five-star standards. You're joining us on the last video in this vlog series, so make sure you check out our travel day and our Barbados Island must-do vlog for all our tips and tricks, if you haven't seen them already. Clearly we're not in Barbados now. It is a rainy, cold, and miserable day down here in the south of England, so what better day to tell you all about the beauty of Barbados and about Seabreeze Beach House. If you're new here, then my name's Sam and I am travel obsessed. I love Disney, I love cruising, and I love traveling the world, and I love showing our boys new countries, new places, new food, new people. And that's exactly what we got from Barbados. So, let's get started. The first thing we're gonna rate and review at Seabreeze Beach House is our first impressions. Let's go back to booking. The website is beautiful. The photos of the resort look really amazing on the website. And I was nervous, is it going to look as good in real life as it did on the website? As always, I spent a lot of time researching. I read a lot of reviews on TripAdvisor and I've got to say the reviews on TripAdvisor are excellent. And that filled me with a lot of confidence. Officially, it is actually a four star hotel, even though it seems to have sort of five star reviews. So bear that in mind. So we booked a classic room with a standard view and we booked it with Destination 2. We flew with Virgin Atlantic using air miles. It wasn't a package holiday, so I'm going to ignore that aspect of it. If you book direct with Seabreeze Beach House on their website, you do get transfers from the airport included. If you book a luxury level room, not a classic level room, you also get transfers included. So for us, we made our own way to Bridgetown Barbados Airport, and we just jumped in a taxi there and then, and it was $39 there, and then it was $39 back as well. And that covered the four of us with four people's worth of luggage. When we arrived at the hotel, we were dropped off just at the arrivals area, and initially it looks very, very pretty. There's lots of greenery, there's lots of beautiful flowers. It was getting darker in the day when we arrived, so it was probably five o'clock in the evening, and they lit all of the fire lanterns, which I just thought was a really lovely touch. We were told to leave our suitcases, staff came out and took our suitcases for us and we made our way through on up into the initial reception area. As we walked up to the initial reception area, we could see the rum shop on the right hand side and we had a little view of the adults only area as well. And as we came up the steps, it could have been a much better first impression. This is probably one of my initial feedback things I would say. Considering what a lovely hotel it is and the wonderful people and the wonderful staff it has, the initial first impression could have just been much stronger. If there had been somebody there with a tray, with some cold towels, that would have been a really, really nice Nice touch. If they just turned the lights on in reception and had better lighting, it wouldn't have felt drab. It doesn't look drab, it just felt a little bit drab because it was it was a bit darker than it needed to be. We did receive a welcome drink, but we'd already been there a few minutes. If they'd have been there with a welcome drink and the cold towel and the lights had been on, honestly it would have been a hundred times better and that just that standard would have taken it in my eyes from a four star experience to a five star experience. However, we sat down, the boys and Carl, my husband, sort of like went off looking around the, the reception area and I sat down and filled out the forms. They were all absolutely lovely. And amazingly, when we got there, they were like, we've seen your YouTube channel, which completely took me by surprise. So it was really lovely. They obviously care about their guests. They look into their guests and they do their research and they were so warm and so friendly and so inviting. So once I filled out the forms, it only took a few minutes. I joined the boys and my husband. They took us on a little tour of the grounds and it was just as the sun was setting. It was absolutely beautiful. And it was such a lovely, lovely evening after waking up up in the cold UK and then ending the day at the Seabreeze Beach House in Barbados. It was really lovely. First impressions of the grounds. The grounds themselves are really lovely. The the beach is breathtaking. Being shown the grounds at sunset for the first time was really, really special. They are memories that I won't ever forget. But I would say those sorts of first impressions of the grounds, etc., are really high. First impressions of 
checking in could be better. So rating our first impressions of check-in and the grounds, I'm gonna give it seven out of 10. It could be higher if that journey at the beginning was just a little bit more seamless. Knowing that we were coming, having the drinks ready, having the cold towel ready, that would have really elevated that experience. Our first impressions of the grounds and the service and how kind people are was amazing. So I would say this could very easily become a nine out of 10 if just a little bit more thought was given to that first initial impression when you're checking in. Okay, so working our way through in chronological order, the next thing that we really explored was our room. Now, bearing in mind that we were in a classic room with a standard view, we were so, so pleased with the room. The room was a really, really good size. We were up on the third floor of that kind of classic building overlooking the adults only area. The room was massive. We had two huge beds. We had a really good sized bathroom. We had a lovely balcony that overlooked, as I said, the adult pool, but we could see the sea, but we could sit on the balcony in the evenings and watch the evening entertainment at the Cerulean restaurant. It was brilliant. I still can't believe actually that that was just a basic classic room. It was really lovely. It had huge wardrobes. They were um, slide along doors. It had a big TV. It had a fridge freezer in it. There was coffee making facilities. Um, it had all the glassware and things that we'd need. The only thing I would say about the room itself the bathroom looked older than the rest of the room. So all the rooms I think were done up through COVID. So they did look pretty new. Um, the shower was just a little, it just looked a, like it could do with a little TLC on the grouting, the tile grouting. We didn't always have enough towels. Considering there was four of us in there, sometimes they didn't give us two small towels, that was it. I think that maybe they just forgot, the rest of them didn't turn up. The only other downside of the room, because it was always um, kept really clean every day, um, but sometimes they didn't come around until like four o'clock in the afternoon. So quite often we'd come back up so the boys could have a nap at like just after lunch. So maybe like two o'clock, three o'clock, and the room still hadn't been done. That wasn't ideal. And then we did find that on days where it hadn't been done, it's not like they then prioritized our room the next day and did ours first, it was still late. That kind of got worse, I would say, as the holiday went on. The busier the resort got, we got there the 6th of February and we didn't leave until the 15th of February. And the closer it got to the UK school holidays, the busier it got and the more they seemed to struggle with that. Other rooms that were available, the luxury rooms look beautiful. They're still decorated very, very similarly, but a lot of them seemed to be in that taller block overlooking the beach and a lot of them, the majority of them, I think, have got ocean front views. Would we up spend more next time and stay there? Uh, yeah. They were beautiful. I honestly don't have anything really bad to say about our room. I really liked it, but there's just something always very special about being on the ocean front. And the views from those rooms are spectacular. Um, that whole building actually is a lot newer. So when you walk into that building, it does all look pristine and brand new. It's got a lift that takes you all the way to the top. Uh, whereas our building, it, there was no lift and we were on the top floor, the third floor. So we ended up having to like carry the pram upstairs. Um, sometimes we carry Jack upstairs. But other than that, yep, great room. So my rating for our room, considering it's a classic room with a standard view and considering the bad points I've said about it not necessarily being cleaned and turned over very early on in the day, I would still give it an eight out of 10. I think it was a fabulous room, a fabulous room. It did us absolutely brilliantly. Oh, one other downside of the room is that there was no bed guard for Jack. So Jack's only two. He's too big really to be in a cot. He's not in a cot at home anymore. Um, so we did put him in the bed with Henry, um, but he did fall out one night because they didn't have any bed guards. We did ask them. We also asked them for a second chair just so we could put that up against the other side of the bed. They couldn't give us one and they said that they wouldn't take it out of another room, even an empty room. So that was not great. That was the first night. And then a couple of nights later, he did roll out of bed. What we did from day one was put as many chairs as we could up against the bed and then just covered it with as many pillows and cushions as we could so if he did fall out it was a soft landing which is exactly what happened so that is a bit of a downside um, but in terms of the room itself if you haven't got really young ones I would say not an issue but as a feedback get some bed guards please see Breeze Beach House it would really put parents minds at rest okay so next let's talk beach and pools there are three pools at the resort. There is an adults only one and then two family ones right next to each other. One of those family pools is next to Flying Fish, which is kind of like a beach bar, pool bar, um, and restaurant right there next to the pool. 
All three of them, they're so close to the beach. The whole resort really is located along the beach there. The second family pool is the long one that has the beds on the side. We, we loved that pool especially because the boys just like jumped off the side, they jumped in. It was amazing getting especially Jack more confident in the water. Henry loved putting his full face mask on and we bought some little like torpedo toys with this for the water and they were throwing them in and reaching it. It was, it was brilliant. The only down th downside I would say about the pool is on some days there was so much grime around the side of the pools and on that first day especially it was really bad in that pool that's next to flying fish the pool bar there's a little like hot tub area it's not actually hot it's the same temperature as the pool itself but it's a lot shallower so it's great for kids but around that whole rim it was so thick with grime it actually discolored my bikini which wasn't great because it was a brand new bikini and it the corners of the pool was thick with green slime just make sure that the pools are cleaned every night and then that would not be an issue but otherwise the temperature of the pool was great size of the pool was great like people were really respectful around them as well it wasn't too noisy people weren't just like bombing into the pools all the time I never got splashed there's lots of beds uh, the sun beds are all really comfortable as well and there are towels provided for you the downside I would say about the towels is they're not available until like half past nine in the morning quite often we'd get down there at like eight o'clock and we'd have to wait an hour and a half to get a towel that wasn't ideal um, if that could be changed that would be a good bit of feedback just to make the, the experience of being around the pools there better the only other thing I would say is just make sure your kids don't run obviously that's quite it is that is obvious don't run around a pool the floor was slippery because the tiles were slippery. I wouldn't say they were more slippery than anywhere else, but I did see a lot of kids go flying. Ours definitely went flying, so we just used to hold their hands as we were walking. I wouldn't suggest that, that that's feedback for the hotel. I think that's just like, it was a good reminder of, oh yeah, the kids are little. They might not be that sturdy on their feet and it's wet. One thing that I would suggest as feedback to the hotel was that third pool with the beds that are in the water up against the wall there that takes you down onto the beach it's grass and it's basically mud with some sand mixed into it rather than being tiled all the way up if that was tiled all the way up that would absolutely transform that area and if they can switch the beds there out for those poor ones that would really make that whole area just beautiful moving on to the beach oh my goodness the beach is beautiful we just loved it it's got beautiful soft white sand the sea is so turquoise it's a little on the rough side I don't think it's always rough. I think we were maybe just unlucky while we were there. We couldn't swim in the sea. There was a red flag or an orange flag the entire time we were there. We didn't have a single day where there was no warning flag. It didn't really make a difference to us, to be fair. The kids did do some bodyboarding, so they went, you know, up to their waist, which obviously isn't high when they're only five and two. And that was so much fun. They just loved running in and out of the waves along the shore. We loved spotting crabs on the rocks. We did go down and watch the sunrise quite a few times on that trip. And if you haven't already seen our budget must-dos in Barbados, then definitely check that out because you can see a lot of the sunsets and the sunrises that we saw from the beach there. It's such a good spot for that. We did see turtles off the shore there, or we saw a stingray off the shore as well while my husband went out for a snorkel one morning. I know you can't guarantee the ocean being calm, but if you want to ensure that you've gotten as much chance as possible I would say then go up to Carlisle Bay with well, the day we went up there it was so calm and every time we went near Bridgetown and saw Carlisle Bay it was so flat and so calm so that might be something to bear in mind but otherwise beautiful beach and there was seaweed every morning and every single day they went along the beach they scooped it all up and they buried it it's a fabulous beach and I loved that the whole resort was just all the way along the beach all you did all day was look at the beach and look at the water it was perfect so rating the pools and the beach I've actually split this down the middle and given two scores so we've got seven out of ten for the pools eight and a half out of ten for the beach how could the beach have gone up higher pure probably the waves if it was calmer we would have been able to be in the water more they do have a trampoline there but the whole time we were there it couldn't be used as in a sea trampoline if it had been calmer we'd have been able to use the catamaran just things like that we kind of missed out on a few things purely because it was quite wavy it was quite rough other than that though the beach is stunning the pool was a seven out of ten i put seven out of ten because we spent so much time in the pool and we loved our time in the pool the downsides of it were it just wasn't as clean as it should have been every day and then as i said the only other area that was a bit of 
an issue is that area from the long family friendly pool with the beds in it up until the beach's edge really and that's it that's my feedback for the pools and the beach right let's talk all inclusive if you're booking Seabreeze Beach House you've probably a lot of research on hotels in Barbados and all inclusive and what they're like all inclusive at Seabreeze Beach House straight off fabulous excellent probably the most relaxed all inclusive I've ever been to there's no wristbands you don't sign for anything at the end of a meal there's no 15 minute rule if you can only get one drink per person every 15 minutes it's not a oh well you can only have one shot of rum in your rum punch it is relaxed and chilled so we actually took some cups with us that keep things colder and they were quite big and when we were getting a can of Banks beer because they are like the smaller 330 mil cans they were like oh the, your, your cup's too big for just one can here's two you're on holiday relax enjoy it's fabulous all the drinks are free poured they've got high-end spirits as well as like more basic spirits we pretty much lived on Mount Gay rum obviously not the kids <laughs> but they've got all like different fruit juices they've got cordials they've got all like sodas and fizz it was such a good choice in terms of drinks and there's loads of bars so bars there is a bar at every restaurant there's a flying fish pool bar there is also the rum shop so the rum shop cafe we love they had lawn games there's just benches to sit and chill they do rum tasting there in the afternoons the staff were always so lovely there rum sours rum punch rum and coke whatever it was that you wanted they made for you generally we would just say to them ah rum something and they'd make us some new cocktail it was always delicious drinks fabulous food also excellent. I was so impressed with the food. There is four restaurants. So you've got Cerulean, which is the highest end kind of restaurant they've got there overlooking the sea. You've got Aqua Terra, which is in a beautiful like colonial kind of rustic building right on the sea edge overlooking the beach again. Then you've got Mahogany, which is the buffet breakfast and lunch and then the sit down meal usually for dinner. Sometimes it was a buffet for dinner as well. And then further along, you've got Flying Fish, which is the pool bar. So let's start with Flying Fish at the end. Flying Fish, the menu is great for lunch. They've got things like, you know, paninis and chips. They've got some like Bayesian fish cakes. They had a roti wrap, which if you've not had a roti wrap before, a Bayesian roti wrap is something you need to try. Great menu for lunch. Can't really fault the menu itself for lunch. It was exactly what we all wanted. Easy peasy. The only downside I would say is that the, when it got busier towards the end of our trip, the service really started lacking at Flying Fish. I mean, they forgot our lunch one day. The boys were waiting an hour for food. That wasn't ideal. Other days they did forget items that we'd ordered. Other than that though, certainly the first week we had no issues whatsoever. It was quick service, always a service with a smile. And the menu's great. Moving along then onto mahogany. Buffet breakfast for me are kind of usually hit and miss, but it was great. I loved mahogany breakfast there's an egg station and it was Marcia who worked the egg station most mornings she was amazing she was so lovely she could choose between poached eggs fried eggs omelettes boiled eggs all the options there was different like Bayesian items as well which was great there's all your cereals your breads loads of fruit there's oats there was um, and then there was even a pancake and waffle station as well so that was great when we ate there for lunch as well I just loved the food there's lots of fresh fish and meats and rice and vegetables and great salads where the egg station is in the morning at lunchtime it's usually a special sometimes they'd have like steak or roast lamb it was just fabulous food dinner there we ate there for dinner i think twice and it was a set menu it was lovely i had a really really nice like caesar prawn cocktail salad which sounded a bit strange but actually it was delicious but yeah couldn't fault mahogany loved it atmosphere you can either eat inside or you can eat outside which is what we tried to do as long as there was a table and 90% of the time there was overlooking the beach you can hear the sea it's just lovely it was really lovely moving on then to Aquaterra Aquaterra we only ate in there once um, by the end of the holiday Aquaterra it's like sushi and again more meats on the menu there was like your, your cheaper steaks and your cheaper meats on there and fish it's a really nice restaurant it's quite a relaxed restaurant it's beautiful in there overlooking the sea still got all the same drinks and same service with a smile and it's laid out really nice and the food was good it wasn't amazing but it was good moving on then to cerulean and i have absolutely saved the best till last cerulean is really special the food there was exceptional from scallops to lobster to amazing like new york strip loin steaks i could not fault 
the service, the restaurant, the attention to detail, the food, the flavors, the drinks. Honestly, Cerulean was amazing. And my favorite thing about the all-inclusive at Seabreeze Beach House is all the restaurants are included. There's no limit to a la carte restaurants that you go to and other experiences with being in other Caribbean islands is it's not always that simple. We could have eaten at Cerulean every single night. There's no limit. You can eat there as many times as you like and there's no charge unless you're picking something on the menu that has a supplement. There was only two things, like the upgraded steak and the lobster. That was it, everything else was included. The menu is to die for. I have not a single bad thing to say about Cerulean. I absolutely adored it. The entertainment at Cerulean as well in the evenings was fabulous. They had some really talented musicians and singers there and it was so great for us when we put the boys to bed and we could sit up on the balcony, enjoy the music and just watch the entertainment. It was excellent. The first night we ate at Cerulean as well, I did actually order two starters because I couldn't choose which one I wanted and they were like, oh, we'll just bring you both. I was like, okay. It was just amazing. So it's essentially unlimited fabulous, all-inclusive. My rating for the all-inclusive at Seabreeze Beach House is a nine and a half out of 10. I honestly found it just amazing. The food was absolutely excellent. The drinks were great. The options were great. It was so relaxed, so easy peasy, no rules. It was fabulous. The only reason it didn't get 10 out of 10 is because they literally forgot our lunch one day at Flying Fish <laughs> um, and forgot one item off of, off of our order another day. And the service there could be slow in those last few days, but that's it. I don't feel like I should be dropping it down more than that because everything else absolutely made up for those things. Okay, so my next part is going to be any room for improvement. Some of them I've already mentioned about if they were too busy, they would miss things on like food menus and things like that. The floors, just be careful that they aren't slippery. So there was one evening, we got to a point we just let Henry go to the toilet on his own because there was always toilets really nearby. He'd gone to the toilet and next thing we know, he came running back out, crying his eyes out with the biggest egg lump on his head I've ever seen. And basically the toilet was overflowing and he'd slipped in it and he'd smashed his head on the rim of the toilet and put his arm in the toilet bowl, bless him. So he was really crying and the staff were, amazing so yes not great the toilet's overflowing our five-year-old boy fell over badly hurt his head but i've got to say the way the staff and the manager arden handled it was amazing they had there was no trying to cover anything up it was we're so sorry we've been to check the toilet the toilet's overflowing we're so sorry they cleaned it up straight away we never saw the issue again they were so just caring with us. And I don't think for any other reason than the fact that they actually just cared. And it was ice for his head. They sent up this huge thing to our room of like sweets and chocolate and crisps for the boys just to say like, we hope you're okay. They checked in on us every single day. Did we need anything? Did we need to go to the hospital? You know, we filled out a form with them. They were so caring. So feedback, all right, clean up the floors, keep on top of it. But otherwise, I think they did a really, really jo good job of that. More towels in the room, as I said at the beginning. If there's four people, really, we need to have a floor mat, a backup floor mat, which would be great. And then four big towels, four small, uh, small towels, and another hand towel. That would have been amazing. And then just having the room cleaned before lunchtime, really, as long as it was done by kind of one o'clock in the afternoon at the latest, I would say great, but four o'clock was way too late. Way, way, way too late. By that point, you know, we're back at the room, the boys are having a nap, even I had a nap some days so that we don't really want to have to get up to answer the door. Beach towels as I said if they can be out a bit earlier that would be great eight o'clock in the morning even seven o'clock if they just leave them out and replenish them every hour. Cleaning the pools as I said got to be done every day. Let's talk about staff and service. So good. We met some amazing people. Cuthbert at the rum shop we loved him. Both Marcias, there's two Marcias, they were both amazing. Jamila was so nice, Joanna, they were all so caring with the boys. And I feel like, oh, oh Maria was also lovely, Danico. They all remembered the boys' names. They just remembered them. And by the end of the trip, they're like, oh yeah, what room are you again? And I'd go three and I'd go, oh seven. They knew that we were in room 307. They were just so caring and so warm and friendly and really genuine. Um, definitely take some money with you to tip them. They were a huge part of what made the trip wonderful. And again, those are the sorts of things that just keep it a four star, I suppose, and not a five star, but they're really small things that can change. So overall room for improvements, I've honestly said everything. This is a completely honest review. So I would say for room for improvement, how much better could it be? So to explain my thought process on rating 
a room for improvement category. If I gave it, if I give it a 10 out of 10, it means there's nothing else that I think they could change or do better. So I've given it an eight out of 10, because actually I don't think there's too much that they can do. There are some key things that I think need addressing, but nothing too major. We did have a couple of really lovely chats with the general manager, and he specifically asked me for my feedback, which I thought was amazing. And he's only been at the hotel three or four months, he said, and he's got, you know, big grand plans, and he seems to be really, really on the ball. So I have got no doubt that if we went back in a few months time, I think that probably would be a 10 out of 10. And I think those little niggles will have gone. Final category is value for money. So I'll be totally upfront with you, ignoring the cost of our flights, because we, we used a Virgin Air Miles and we had two reward seats as well. So we got an absolute steal for the flights. So I'm just talking about here, the price of the hotel, our nine night stay in a classic room, standard view at Seabreeze Beach House for the four of us. So it was 4,380 pounds total. I think that's a very, very good price. So including the flights, it costs just over 5,000 pounds for a nine night, fully all-inclusive stay. The only thing we paid for on top of that that we needed to spend money on was the transfers, which was another $100, I suppose, all in by the time we'd put like given tips and stuff like that there and back. I think a really good price. When you compare that now to what you get elsewhere, I think it's fabulous. I did have a look at the website to see what the prices would be at the same time next year, and they seemed a lot more expensive. So I don't know if we had a really good price. I don't know, let, can you let me know in the comments, like when you've been looking at staying at Seabreeze Beach House, what's the price look like? Has it been extortionately more? Did we really get an excellent price? Because I think the price was amazing. Value for money, I don't think you can beat that. To be in Barbados, right on the beach, with excellent food, lovely people, great drinks, and the best all-inclusive I've ever been to, for that price for nine nights over February half term, I don't think you can beat that. Please let me know what you think about that. Please let me know. Okay, value for money has got to be a 10 out of 10. Everything I've just said, wholeheartedly believe that was serious value for money. So thank you Seabreeze Beach House and Ocean Hotels. Okay, so that leaves us then with an overall score out of 70 of 58, which is 83%. Now I think that's really good for a four star hotel. Again, let me know what you think about this, or everything I've said, everything you've seen. Do you think this is a fair score? If you've been to Seabreeze Beach House, do you think this is a fair score? And hey, you might have a completely different opinion to me, and that's absolutely fine. But yeah, would we go back? Oh yeah, we'd go back, 100%. I actually feel, I feel reluctant about trying anything else in Barbados because we had such a lovely experience. It was the most wonderful week. As I said, if you haven't seen our other vlogs in this Barbados series, then please do go back and watch them because we've got travel day which is our first impressions checking in at Seabreeze Beach House and then our budget must do's for Barbados. There was no intention of those being budget it just so happened that our favourite things that we did were really quite cheap so all in all Barbados was amazing. We have a problem. What's the matter? Check out your lipstick. <gasps> and Seabreeze Beach House, you were amazing. If you've enjoyed the video, then please give it a thumbs up and let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Also, if you haven't already, then make sure you've hit subscribe so you can join our little community of travel fun and that way you make sure that you don't miss the next vlog when it goes live. One thing I would say actually about Seabreeze Beach House is that it has a sister hotel owned by the same kind of umbrella company called Ocean Hotels in Barbados and it's the O2 Beach Club. We would love to try that one day. That is their five star version of Seabreeze, I suppose. Seabreeze being four star, O2 being five star. So one day we would love to visit that one too and try that out. So have any of you watching been to both of them or have any of you been to O2 and maybe not been to Seabreeze? Um, let me know your thoughts as well. I'd love to hear what you think about that. But otherwise, it's been so nice chatting with you today. Thank you so much for watching. It's been great having you along and I'll see you very soon. Goodbye.